In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about graphs. In a computer, a graph is used for a non-linear relationship. We've looked at data structures so far that have linear relationships. Think about arrays. So for example, the relationship between a person and their friends within a social network, or the distances between a city and other cities, or a web page and all the links on its web pages. These are examples of graphs. You can see three examples here on the screen. So remember a graph has a non-linear relationship. We can create graph-like data structures, and there's some more visualizations here. The key words you need to know for graphs are vertices and edges. We've come across the word node before, and you should be familiar with this. The items within the graph are what we call nodes. But sometimes these can also be called vertices. An edge shows a relationship between an object. When we're dealing with graphs, sometimes relationships can be undirected and sometimes they can actually be directed. Sometimes these relationships can have weightings. Think of a map, the different distances between the different vertices. Now remember when we're programming there's actually no function that can actually create a graph. So we use inbuilt data structures such as arrays and lists. Remember with arrays sometimes we can call these adjacency matrices. With lists they can be called adjacency lists and with lists and arrays we can call these ordered pairs. So let's have a look at an adjacency matrix. It's produced using a 2D array. If you're unsure about what a 2D array is, you need to go back and look at the materials on 2D arrays. These arrays can store directed and undirected, weighted and non-weighted graphs. We basically use a table known as a matrix to create, to create a visualisation of the 2D array where each row and column headers contain the nodes of the graph. You can see three examples here. First of all, for a weighted graph, the one in the middle, the value at the edge can be placed in the cell of the table where the nodes intersect. So if you look here, we can see that 2 to 4 is 10. We look across the way to find 2 and then down the columns to find 4. You can also see 2 to 1. 2 to 1 is 15. But also 1 to 2 is also 15. For an unweighted graph, you can see the one on the left hand side. We just use a Boolean value of 1 to show that the edges are between the different nodes and they intersect. For our directed graph, the matrix is non-symmetrical. This shows the direction of the relationship. So in our matrices here, you can see A to B has a 1. We're reading down the rows from A to B. But from B to A, there's no Boolean value. This is because this is a directed graph and there's no direct pointer between B to A. Each of the different edges show in the table. Remember on this one, we read across the rows. Here's an example of a question that you might face in the exam. Draw an adjacency matrix to represent the weighted graph below. Now, first of all, we have to figure out what type of graph it is. Is it a weighted graph? Is it a directional graph? And you can see it's a weighted graph. So we have to have all the different vertices down one side and we repeat those across the top. Then we need to complete the different parts of the adjacency matrix. Now an adjacency list is just a different way of representing a graph. We use a list to create this. Now remember a list can be a very very Python-esque data structure. But we can think of this as being working in other programming languages as well. 
Each are directly linked to the subsequent links. And we can actually use dictionaries to store these data types as well. So you can see unweighted and weighted examples here. And it shows the relationships that they've got. So each node is added to a list. And each node within the list is then linked with either a list or a dictionary to the nodes it's attached to. So here you can see when it's unweighted, A is linked to B, D and E. B is linked to E. And because this is directional, if we look at E, it's not linked back to A because this is a directional graph. When we look at our weighted, you can see we've used our dictionary. Remember, our dictionary has a curly bracket when we're using Python. Inside that, we have the data value followed by the uh, amount and the weight associated with that, separated by a colon. Remember, each item in there also should be separated by a comma. So here's an example question that you might face for an adjacency list in the exam. Draw an adjacency list to represent the weighted graph below. Pause the video, try and complete this. Once you've done that, have a look at the answer. Here's a second question for an adjacency list. But remember, this time there's no weights. Draw the directed graph below. Pause the video and complete that now. The final type of graph is using an ordered pair. We can use ordered pairs to implement a graph data structure fairly simply, and we just use a 2D array in this instance again. Each item holds a pair of related nodes and their weights if it's a weighted graph. There's two examples here on the screen for you. So here's an example. You can see the first one is a directional ordered pair graph with no weightings, it's unweighted. So you can see if we start, A directs to B. It also goes to D. The way we tra traverse this list is we then move to our next node. So B would be the next node in this tree. Think about our tree structure. We go to the, the smallest value next. Now, actually, B and A is multidirectional. So we can also have B going back to A, but it also goes to C, D and E. So we need separate values in our array for this. We then need to add any other directions that we've not included. At the bottom of the screen, you can see the same graph, but this time they are weighted. It looks fundamentally the same, but within our 2D arrays, we have our weights. Just like when we were dealing with a tree, we have a traversal. Graph traversal is the process of reading a graph data structure. This process actually has to be quite specific. There could be a high number of relationships between nodes, and it can actually be a headache to ensure that each node and the weight are visited only once. Now remember we could use heuristics for this, thinking back to our previous units, making sure that we either visit all nodes, but in some graphs we can visit just the nodes that we want to have a look at. And we had different algorithms to do this, including the A star algorithm. The traversal process must therefore be able to keep track of which nodes have been visited so that a node is not visited twice. And this enables the process of graph traversal to make use of stacks and queues. Like we had with a tree, we've got a depth first traversal. So here you can see our tree example, but it's similar to a graph. We can almost think of it like a graph, like a tree. We have a starting node. We visit all the nodes attached to the starting node. Then we visit the node attached to that and so on until all the nodes have formed the lines of inquiry. Remember, a depth first tree traversal would start at a root node. We then, once we've visited all those, we can backtrack and see if there are any others attached. But this is not a binary tree. So in this example, A has three 
adjacent nodes and we need to visit those in order. So look at the position of the stack here. We start with A and we place A on our stack. We go to the least value which is B. Next we're going to see if B has any adjacent nodes. Well it does, it has C, so C goes onto our stack. We visit C, C doesn't have any leaf nodes, so C can be removed from the stack. We go back to B and we check to see if there's any child nodes which are greater than B. Remember we always go to less than first and then greater than. There's not, so we remove B from the stack. We're still left with A. Now the next value from A is D. D has one leaf node which is F, so we can visit F. Now F is also connected to E and this is where it's different than a tree. So E gets placed onto the stack. Now because E has visited already A, D and F, we've already found those, all we need to do is visit G. G is put on the stack. G doesn't have any child nodes so it removes itself from the stack. E has visited all nodes already so it's removed from the stack as is F, as is D and we return back to our root node A. A has already visited all items so it is removed from the stack and we finished. Now notice how that when we're programming this algorithm we need a visited nodes array so that we can keep a track of which nodes we visited. This will make our algorithm much more efficient. We're also using push and pop. Remember these two features of a stack, push puts something on top of a stack and pop removes it. Now remember we can think of the big O notation of this graph. This is quite efficient because we always know what push and pop are going to achieve. And so we can plan for an effective algorithm. Now remember when we are talking about trees, there were different versions of traversal. There was depth and breadth. Well, it's the same with graphs. There's a breadth first traversal. So we visit a starting node, then we visit all nodes attached to its neighbours. Then, starting one of these nodes, we visit each of the neighbours and return back to the starting node. It's best to look at this in an example. We still use a queue here. We use DQ and NQ. Remember with a Q, it's first in, first out. So the first item, the root node is A. We visit A. Next up, A, we have a look at its neighbours. So B, D and E go into the Q. They get NQ'd as they're found to be neighbours of A. Once we've done that, we can remove A from the queue. We've visited all its neighbours. Remember, we've also got this array called visited nodes, where we keep a track of all the nodes we've currently visited. So next up, we look at B. All the neighbours are B and the C, so we put C at the end. Now notice C sits there and we don't do anything with C till right near the end, because this is a breadth first traversal. Remember with the tree, we almost had those distinct layers. Next up, we look at D. D has a neighbour. Its neighbour is F. Once we've found its neighbour, we remove uh, D, Q, F, uh, sorry, D from the Q. So the next item we look at is E. Now, E is connected to 2, F and G, but we've already got F in our array, so we only need to add G. We D, Q, E. There's nothing to add now because G doesn't have any nodes which we haven't visited. So we can remove the next value, C, F and then G. And that's our breadth first traversal.